Hi, I'm Junior, standing outside of a Coachman Catalina. Now, I told Mike that when we did this video, we try to go ahead and loan it to him so we wouldn't mention that we're from Keystone RV Center off I-81 in Greencastle, Pennsylvania. Phone number 1-800-232-3279. Today, we're going to be talking about winterizing. First thing I'm going to do is open up the outside of this 293 and bleed off some of the water pressure with the camp kitchen sink. Then I'm going to hit the low point drains, which on this floor plan is right in front. Now there are two sets of these, one on this side, one on the other side. We're going to hit the other one while we're off camera. Next I'm going to come over here. and get a socket that should be a one and one sixteenth. There we go. Open this up, make sure our hot water heater is in the off position, okay? Very important there. I'm just gonna put this on here, relieve any pressure that we might have in the tank right up top there and then we're going to start to loosen this valve up. Once we got this valve loosened up, any water that would be in that tank would be coming out at this point. At this point, we're going to go over to the other side and release the low point drains. You're going to get a better look at that once we get on that side to empty the fresh water tank, things like that. So, so what you want to do is look for the monster energy can and that's typically where the back of the hot water heater is. No, in all seriousness, we're going to take a look at the outside of our Catalina. Now on this 293 QBCK floor plan, it's right underneath the oven just beside the uh, converter and we'll have an access panel right on that LP leak gas detector. Um, but take a look, figure out where the hot water heater is and there'll usually be a little access panel right here. I need to thank Bunk for loaning me his drill so I don't have to do this by hand. Thank you, Bunk. Pop this down. Pull these wires out here. Just set these screws off to the side. Now, you're not going to get a good view of this right now, but we're going to do a quick video of it afterwards. Uh, Big John over in Parts has a diagram of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the hot water off coming out of the tank shut the hot the cold water off going into the tank and then open the bypass valve what this does is allow the water to complete the loop and you're going to get a better view of that now if this is your trailer i would just leave this undone until the summer maybe put the screws back into the wall just a few threads but since this unit's going to be sitting on our lot here for hopefully another week or two we can get this thing sold maybe into your driveway. We're going to put this back together for right now. Just snug those down. Hi, I'm Junior from Keystone RV Center. This is the backside of a hot water heater. Now we touched on this briefly in the Catalina video, but here's what I want you to picture. These two black pieces here are what's going into the hot water heater. The red's going to be the hot side, the blue's going to be the cold. So during normal operation, water comes in, goes into the hot water heater, gets heated up, comes out, goes to the rest of the trailer. To bypass it for the winterization mode, what I want you to do is turn all the valves from their current position. This will apply whether it's a two valve, three valve, single valve, doesn't matter, okay? So what we've done is we've shut the water off. The position of this shows the position of the valves. So the water coming in now gets stopped right here and is now allowed to come up this way, tries to cheat its way back into the hot water heater, is stopped right there, then continues on the rest of the way. So when you're winterizing, it's pumped in, comes up, and then winterizes the rest of the hot water heater. If you're watching just the single video, not the full winterization video, make sure you pull the anoid rod out. Um, a common problem we'll see in the springtime, this valve, people will turn this one and this one, but forget about this one. What that'll do is give you about three to five seconds of hot water, and then it'll go back. Make sure you turn all the valves come spring so the water comes in, can't come up this way. So this should be summer, and this should be winter for a three valve position. So underneath the kitchen sink, we're gonna find a panel right here. 
I'm just going to pull these screws loose here. One there. And again, guys, these are number two square tips. We're going to pull this panel out of the way without hitting Mark's delicate camera. Guys, and as you can tell, we use a flashlight for lighting. So if you're enjoying these videos, send us a case of Monster Energy drinks so we have the energy to hold these light, these lights. What we're going to do now is go to reach back here and reverse the direction of both these valves. Take our hose out. And we're just going to drop this piece into a gallon of antifreeze after taking this little cap off. So we're just going to drop our hose to the bottom of the gallon of antifreeze. You are going to want to cut the top of the gallon of antifreeze off. The beautiful thing with that cap is it keeps the water and antifreeze from leaking underneath of our sink. However, it does make it tough to get it into the gallon of antifreeze. Just turn our water pump on. And we should see this guy draw some water up. Now that our sink, now that our water pump is pressurized with antifreeze, we're just going to open up the cold line, let it run. Keeping an eye on the pump to make sure it doesn't go dry. That's got a nice good pink flow to it. You're going to go ahead and open up the hot. And you're going to see it go back to clear and then back to pink. Should look like the scene from the Ghostbusters, right Mark? That's what it should look like. Now, you can either cut the top off another one or simply pour into the open container and pray that you don't make a mess. And Dory's back, so if we do, we know we can get it cleaned correctly. Coming into the bathroom, we're going to repeat that process. Got good pink out of there. Good pink out of there, just double check them. Come over here. Got a little bit of pink, got a lot of pink. Come over here to the shower. Good solid pink from that. Good solid pink from that. Pull the drain plug, let everything run down. And then I'm going to take this whole piece off and splatter it all over Mark. Tip it up just like that. Allow that hard piece of plastic to not be in contact with anything. All right, let's go outside. I did get Mark's leg. Mark, show your leg. That's disturbing. <laughs> let's go outside, guys. We're going to come outside, we're going to do the exact same thing at this sink, got good clean pink coming out of there. Good solid pink there. Yeah, that's good. We'll dump that at the end. Let's come around here to the other side. Next thing we're going to hit is the outside shower. That's good pink there. That's good there. All right. Last but not least, we're going to find the city water connection, which is this white piece right here. We're going to pop this off, just wiggling her back and forth till we can get her loose. Then take a good stance clear.
All right, let's go top off the antifreeze. We'll give every valve one last little uh, run, and then we'll take the container around and tip that down each one of the drains to make sure we're flushing it with nothing but pure antifreeze so those low points in those S drains have nothing but antifreeze in them at this point. Let's go inside again. So for a third gallon of antifreeze, which I'm going to have some of you in the comments tell me that we can do it with two gallons, you can do it with 1.25, you can do it with three quarters of a gallon. Great for you. This is a video meant for everybody. Some of them are going to be more talented and be able to do it with their two. Our techs can do that a lot. I'm going to recommend three and here's why. The cost for this extra gallon of antifreeze is less than any part in this entire coach that you're going to replace from, uh, from the water lines. So I'm going to pour half of that back into the jug. I'm going to relieve the other half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run just a little bit more out of both taps. All right. Notice I ran that now down both sides of the kitchen sink. And now we're just going to pour a little bit straight down the P-traps there, or down the sink drains to get into the P-traps. All right. And I'm going to repeat that process at every drain, shower, everything. So then I'll go around and just hit all the valves as I go. Make sure I've got good antifreeze through the rest of it. You can't save this stuff till next year, so you might as well use all that three gallons. All right, guys, last but not least, we're going to drain our black and gray tanks at an approved dumping station. We're going to, these are the other low point drains I was telling you about. And we're going to drain our fresh water tank. right there. Now I'm going to take this low point drain cap, put it right inside there, inside the shower, the outside shower, push this hose back in. Push that up like that. Lock it up. And I'm going to go finish my Monster Energy drink. Mark's going to load up these. I'm going to go sit up here at an Apex, and we're going to show you how to fill a fresh water tank next. You guys, take care. Have a great day. Check out the next coming videos.